Uncle Tien, we're here to chat with you. Oh? <laughs> what a lovely surprise. Welcome. Oishi, why don't you go downstairs and get the shopkeeper to make us a fresh pot of tea? I heard that you've been traveling all over the place recently. I would very much like to hear your adventure stories. Hoishin told you, didn't she? Don't worry. I'm quite all right. It's just the years gradually catching up with me. As I grow older, I'm starting to find that, with many things, I am still very much in good standing as the Tianshu today. Nevertheless, I wish to pass on the position before my mental acuity begins to decline beyond redemption. Is it to transfer the Tianshu position? Oh, well, you see, the Tianshu is a rather unique position among the Liu Qixing. Historically speaking, the Tianshu rarely appears in public. We stay behind the scenes, planning and giving advice. So, we also want to keep any prospective Tianshu candidates free from influence by outside forces. So, we tend to be as discreet as possible in their assessment and appointment. For these reasons, the incumbent Tianshu typically recommends their candidate of choice, and this is then approved by the other Qixing members. So, in other words, you pick someone, and then Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang, and the other Qixing appoint them? Correct. Unfortunately, due to my health, I won't be able to assess every candidate myself. Not to despair, however because I found someone exceptionally capable to act on my behalf as assessment officer. <laughs> In fact, I believe you recently became acquainted with her yourself. Oh? Who is it? I'm heartbroken. I thought it might take you a little longer than this to forget. Jackpot. Uncle Tian here asked me to assess three candidates for him. Fancy joining me? You'll be among the first to get to know the next Tian Shu. Might be a good opportunity for you. Hmm. What do you think? Paimon thinks so too. It can't be a bad thing to be on good terms with the new Qixing, right? All right, then. Though, I gotta say, Uncle Tian, you say you're into behind-the-scenes planning? My work's of the covert variety, too. Don't you think I might make a good Tian Shu? Huh? Yeilan, you want to be the next Tian Shu? I'm not opposed to the idea, but I suspect Ningguang wouldn't let you go very easily after how long you've been working together. So, how about this? If your investigation reveals that none of the other candidates are qualified for the position- Deal. Well, you guys take your time. Everything's all set for the assessments to go ahead.
Meet me on the first floor when you're ready. Until then, have a pleasant conversation. Oh, and no need to pay for your tea. As the new owner of this fine establishment, this runs on the house. You're all set? Uncle Tian seems really worn down. It's like all his energy's gone. Yeah, it may sound harsh, but Uncle Tian is past his prime. He's not cut out for this anymore. So he's recommended three candidates. Their names are Qin Wei, Ming Guo, and Zhu Yi. Qin Wei is a wealthy entrepreneur. Ming Guo works at the Liu Wei Ministry of Civil Affairs, and Zhu Yi is focused on study and travel. Try to keep all that in mind. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really. Qian Wei, Ming Guo, Zhu Yi. Paimon should be able to remember their names, but what? Let's leave that until we get to Yuhai Pavilion. All right. Heads in the game, people. The stakes don't get much higher than a change in the Qixing. We can't afford to miss anything, no matter how small. Got it. We'll keep our eyes wide open. What's the hurry? My legs are getting sore. What is wrong with this assessment officer? This is a huge occasion and I don't even get a chair. I've dealt with all kinds of people in my time, but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think it's fine. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just... being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Tianwei, that was a bit uncalled for, and Mingbo cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs? Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, it would be better than nothing. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Mm-hmm. 
We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages. Current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. These are the reports they submitted. Wow! One of them is really thick! It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. There's still some time. Have a skim through, get a first impression of what each person's proposing. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done. Finished? Almost! Finished, huh? What did you think? Everyone took it very seriously. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tianshu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. <laughs> That's for me to know, and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Yes, ma'am. Oh? So you two are the assessment officers, are you? I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be assessing us in person. I trust you've read through my manifesto? I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience. Mind your tongue, mister! Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was cloud retainer. You know this adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that, with your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh, Mingbo. I work in the Ministry of Silver. I've worked there for, um, nine years, five months, and three days. In I have twelve active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in... My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for, uh, 
auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts. Uh, is it just Paimon, or is he not very good at public speaking? You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope, but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put... Very fair question. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself, and my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. Of course, two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways, and you might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? A great question. Well, I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the Yuehai Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Post-implementation, it would all come down to the results. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. Hmm. Nice answer. All right, next question. He seems like a great guy. Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure. Here's my take on what we just learned. As you saw, Chenwei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Mingbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. But he and Shenwei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Perfect summary! Paimon couldn't agree more! You're good at this, Yiwan. Last but not least, Jur Yi. His manifesto is full of pertinent details, his methodology is sound, and his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. But, what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle Tien's. Having someone like Jur E take the position would- Great! We'll see. Let's go back and report to Uncle Tien. I see. 
then it's more or less as I anticipated. All right, then let me ask this. The ideas in Jury's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Oh, I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list of candidates. For fear of affecting your judgment. <laughs> but I can tell you now. Those three candidates have all studied under me in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. But Xin Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Guo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Whoa! So how did you get to know them all, Uncle Tian? Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend. Ming Guo came to my attention in the... We first met while fishing. Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. Juri came from a poor family, and he reminded me of a younger version of myself. So... I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and noticed how quiet. And now, all of a sudden, he's grown into a mature young man. The young are growing up and I am growing old. How time flies. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It, it just means I finally have a good reason to retire and spend my days doing what old men like me should be doing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Sounds like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. <laughs> Ooh, and freshly caught fish? Duh, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. Fresh fish soup. Mmm, sounds tasty. Doesn't it? <laughs> also, some time ago. Jury purchased a very special recipe from an old fi When we've been fishing recently, Jury always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Oh, the addition of these makes the That flavor makes for a fond memory. But at my... Oh, can Paimon come next time too? Paimon really wants to try it. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, we've reported back. Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations and make your... Remember, you must be thorough. Understood. Come on, let's go talk somewhere else. Bye-bye, Uncle Tian. Look after yourself. So, it's gonna be Jiri, right? His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Easy. 
Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. For example, Wen Yuan, Shanghua. Yes? Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? Did they scare you? These two are Wenyan and Shanghua. They work for me. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. They also perform various assignments as required. Shanghua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wen Yuan relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. Is he alright? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. Shenghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qianwei's background. Wenyuan, go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingbo's work files. Yes, ma'am. Um, so what about Juri? Juri, well, obviously, as the most promising candidate, we will be investigating him ourselves. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. If we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Bulai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. Look, your asking price for this batch is just too high. I can't buy in at this price. How am I supposed to turn a profit? Come on, hear me out. I'm telling you, this is the single best batch of Sunsetias ever. You won't find anyone who disputes that. I accidentally dropped one into a well, and even the water turned sweet. Even so...
Uh, sh 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 all right, all right. I'll let you in on a little secret. The boss of Second Life also wants to buy from me, but I haven't responded yet. If you won't take him, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way... I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life. Oh, what are you doing here? And to be clear, these Sunsetias are mine. I got to them first. Don't get any ideas. Actually, we want to ask you about a guy called Jury. Have you heard of him before? Jury? Yes, he's quite well known. I've heard a story about him. They say he was born into poverty. His parents died when he was young, and he was treated cruelly by the local community. One of his neighbors was terribly rude to him all the time, but Jury never retaliated. And when his neighbor went bankrupt, he even helped support the family. He returned cruelty with kindness, oh, injustice with peace offerings, a gentleman of talent and character, and... Uh, oh, how did I not notice him sooner? In fact, maybe I'm not... Oh, he sounds like a decent man. We can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Why are you asking about him anyway? You aren't uh, looking for a brand ambassador too, are you? Well then, in that case, the higher bidder takes the... Hmm? Ah, that's Jerry right over the... Where? It's him, all right. Looks like he's chatting with Lin Long. Come on, let's follow them and listen in. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I'll just go and fetch an employment contract, and hey... Don't try and cut me out of this. Hey! I understand. Let's walk and talk. What are you waiting for? We won't hear anything at this rate. So, you're a look... Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I understand. Let's walk and talk. My friend, what can I get you? So, you're looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of mine... What's the hurry? Don't get too close, or he'll see you. My friend... 
try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I understand. Let's walk and talk. So, you were looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of mine, who likes to have a drink now and then... He fancies himself as a man of culture, but doesn't care for needless extravagance. So I thought I might buy him a set of high-quality fakes. How very thoughtful of you! Leave it to me, then. Come and collect it at Shigu Antiques whenever is convenient. Thank you very much, Miss Long. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jury. These days, it's quite rare for someone of your standing to still keep up with their old friends. It's nice to see. I'll be sure to pick out a good set for you. You can count on me. Hmm. Jerry seems to get along really well. Are you satisfied now, Yelon? Seems like everyone thinks Jerry's a great guy. We shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's go check out the wharf where he usually goes fishing. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But hey, if I do become Tianshu, I'll look out for you guys. You'll be able to try all the finest food for free. How does that sound? We will? Well, come on! Off to the South Wharf we go! The wharf is as busy as ever. I hear the anglers here sometimes sell their fish to the nearby fishmongers. Hmm. Well, let's see what Uncle Soon has to say. Welcome. What would you like to buy today? Sorry to interrupt. We're actually members of the, uh, Liyue Anglers Association, and we just wanted to ask a few questions about someone. 
We've heard about this young man called Jur E, who's supposed to be a fantastic fisherman. Just wondering if you happen to have heard of him? Whoa! Yeon made up a whole fake identity! Without batting an eyelid! Ah, yes, Jur E. He's been making quite a name for himself recently. I've got some friends who travel all over the place, and they tell me every... Hmm, apparently, he had a rather tough time growing up. Had to work several jobs alongside his studies to make ends meet. How does that saying go? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, if there's anything to that logic, he's sure to be phenomenally successful one day. But I'm afraid your Anglers Association might be in for a disappointment. Oh? Huh? Why is that? He's good at a lot of things, but fishing isn't one of them. He fishes at the wharf and sells what he catches to me on occasion. His catches are always mediocre. Not terrible, but equally nothing to write home about. If you're looking to recruit some new members, though, I do know a few top anglers I could put you in touch with. That sounds fantastic. I've got a couple of other things to attend to right now, though, so why don't I come back some other time and we can chat over a drink? Sure thing. See you. Everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm. Come on, let's keep asking around. Here to buy some fish? It's 300 for one or three for 1,000. You better hurry. When they're gone, they're gone. Hello. We're from the Society for Fish Price Research. We'd just like to ask a few questions. Wow! She switched identity again! Society for Fish Price Research? I haven't done anything illegal. Stay out of my business. Please, don't worry. We're just here to conduct a simple survey. We've heard about a certain Jur E who's been selling fresh fish at low prices in this area recently. Do you know anything about this? So this isn't about me. You should have said something, you know. I know the guy. I can tell you. I haven't heard anything about him selling fresh fish at low prices, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was him. Oh? What is that? Because he's so poor, his parents died when he was very young, and his alcoholic father still owed a huge amount of debt. No one wanted anything to do with him. He was still a kid when he first came to the wharf. His clothes were ragged, and he had a bandage wrapped around his head. And he managed to survive, thanks to Uncle Tien, who gave him some food. But still to this day, he doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. I mean, he can afford to eat and everything, but you'll often see him haggling with others over just a few mora, so... It's not like he catches much anyway, so it's not going to affect my business. Uh, uh, don't, don't tell him I said that.
You'd rather he didn't know? Well, I spoke to him once, briefly, and I just had a feeling that he really cares what other people think of him. I think he has pretty low self-esteem, but hey, it's hardly my place to say anything. What he's achieved already puts most people to shame. And nobody's perfect. I just wouldn't want to upset him. That's all. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Not a problem. And just for the record, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the price of my fish. The more times you say it, the less convincing it becomes. Hmm. Doesn't have a lot of Mora to his name. Okay, let's keep going. What brings you to me? The truth is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, who knows... <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? But of course. We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never turns away anyone who comes with questions. Great! Uh -uh. So what do you wish to know? Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. Uh, now she's lying to a kid. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of jur -E? Sure have! You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? I've heard many tales of jury. For example, um... Uh, I can't remember. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword-fighting heroes! Oh, I can completely understand that. Then, let me ask you this. Oh yeah! I know that! It was about two or three months ago. Before that, people always used to talk about jury in a kind of nasty tone of voice. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like him. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. Oh yeah, one other thing. These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. Oh, definitely. Great! So next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them, too. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would all... Thank you, ma'am! You're welcome. Well then, fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again. Any of that sounds strange to you? Strange? What was strange about it? Jiri seems to have a great reputation. 
reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gas spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. True, but the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? It almost seems too good to be true. Sudden? Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness, and had to work to support his studies. These are the kinds of things that make someone well-known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top, if you ask me. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about Jur Yi's stories? Clearly they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he... Plus, there's the fact that all this praise of Jur Yi has only been happening within the last two or three months. His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor. None of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? When you put it like that, it is kind of strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. Jur E was born into a poor family. Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game as far as I'm concerned. The problem is, do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? He's stayed poor his whole life. Everything he's earned, he's right. And that changes everything. It can mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu Ed Shixing. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixing? That sounds serious. What should we do? Even if we ask Jiu Yi about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it! First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after whoever is secretly helping Jiu Yi must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. So, we should be able to find some hints in Jur Yi's... Come on, let's get back to Yen Shang Tea House. Jur E's manifesto covers a huge range of topics. Looking for details that don't add up will be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I'll divide the reports into two piles. You take one, I'll take the other. When we're finished, we'll put our heads together. Officially, the assessment is already over, and I'll be expected to announce the results before long. So we have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as we can. Whatever else Uncle Tian might think of Jur Yi, the fact remains that he's one of his favorite students. Any evidence he's left is not going to be immediately obvious. We'll have to... Huh. Even though Yelan took half, this is still a lot to get through. Well, we gotta start somewhere.
is giving Paimon a he... <sighs> Let's take a break! <laughs> uh, looks like I'm the first one back, as usual. You betcha. I visited all the commerce guilds and gathered a wealth of information. Every time they asked me to leave, but I always had a- Don't drag this out. Just tell us your findings. Yes, Lady Elon. To summarize my findings, most people who've had interactions with Qianwei will start out complaining about how proud and arrogant he is, but then go on to give a generally positive appraisal of him. The young master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild said that Qianwei appears arrogant, but he's very scrupulous in the way- Once he signs a contract with somebody, he treats them fairly regardless of- Who'd have thought? Is it possible that his reputation is fake? Is there any way you can check the accounts of the businesses under his name? In theory, that should be very difficult, but here's the thing. I asked around and found out that almost all of Qianwei's accounts are open to the public. Where he buys from and sells to should be confidential business information, but he doesn't seem interested in protecting it at all. Chen Wei often sees business opportunities that others don't, but once he's made enough mora off of it, it's like he gets sick of it and releases all of his trade secrets. It's like he wants people to know that they still can't beat him, even if he shares all of his secrets. The fact that- What a strange guy. It's like he's not doing business to make more- To validate his theories. No wonder his manifesto contains so many insights. It's all the result of his first-hand experimentation. I'm back! Huh? Ah, uh, how come you're- Why do you think? Obviously, because I possess superior skills, and- You- Ugh, Whatever. I'm not getting into an argument with you. If I hadn't had something else to take care of on the way, I would have been back long before you. Lady Yelan, I have finished investigating Mingbua. Well, we're all ears. The Ministry of Civil Affairs says that Mingbua struggles to get his words out when he gets nervous, especially when he's chatting with strangers. But after a few days of getting to know him, you can pretty much have a normal conversation with him. On the whole, the feedback from the Ministry of Civil Affairs was very positive. He always considers the things that everyone else overlooks. In your opinion, was the Ministry of Civil Affairs appraisal of Mingbuo at all exaggerated? I don't believe so. Mingbuo is someone who has slowly but surely earned the reputation he has. According to Miss Yu, the Ministry often gets Mingbuo to take a final look at projects before they're implemented. People feel much more confident in something if it ha- oh! And also, there was once someone in the ministry who was lying and cheating to try to advance their career. Mingbua gave them the scolding of a lifetime. Apparently, he can be terrifying when he loses his temper. I haven't seen it for myself, though. Whoa, that's hard to imagine. Like I said before, things are not always as they appear. you meant by that. Paimon's starting to get it now. Thank you both. You're free to go now. So, have you finished reading the manifesto? We still have a bit left.
too cruel has always been hunting these secrets. To us Asia had once wrought havoc there, so there are even more secrets buried deep underground. And at some point, a rumor began to go around that there is great treasure buried beneath Chiang Shu Pool. A long time ago, with the approval of the Qixing, a mining team conducted an exploratory ex- So, did they find any treasure? None. The ruin was completely impenetrable. The only way they could have gotten through the solid rock would have been by blowing it open with a special kind of explosive. The technology wasn't mature enough at that time, so the excavation project was shut down and the treasure became a mere legend. Jur E's manifesto focuses on solving problems, and this treasure hunt seems extremely risky. It seems out of step with the rest of his plans. Still, this one fact alone doesn't tell us much. Everyone wants to get their hands on this treasure. The treasure hoarders, the Fatui, even local Liyue factions. <laughs> Did you find anything? Excavation? Project? Treasure? Did we read anything similar in our half of the manifesto? Oh yeah! Juri said the Blackcliff Forge workers should get right a first refusal if any suitable projects come up! Did he now? Well, that makes everything much clearer. So Jur E wants the Black Cliff Forge to excavate the treasure of Qiyun Shu Pool. Does that mean the Black Cliff Forge is Jur Yi's secret supporter? No, not likely. I've looked into the Black Cliff Forge before. They aren't involved with any powerful factions at present. They do possess some specialized explosives. But it would seem more trouble than it's worth to put so many resources into a risky project like this. Still, since the clues are pointing toward the Black Cliff Forge, we should see where they lead. We may well find something new. Chen Wei and Mingbo both turned out to be completely different. What about Ju Yi? Is there another side to him, too? Soil is moist, ideal for collecting the roots of boom blossoms. No, please, allow me to handle this. <laughs> this is the Black Cliff Forge. Let's look around for clues. light active biological organisms yes this is a good place to sketch
From the back, it looks like a ledger, but it seems they also use it as a sight log. We don't know who wrote it, but it's interesting, don't you think? These newcomers, who could have sent them? You think they're suspicious? Yes. Look, it says right there, one of them's already been promoted to- At this rate, by the time the Qing Shu Pool redevelopment plan is ready to roll, they'll be the technical backbone of the team. That'll give them the chance to take a lot of liberties. They can copy any secret texts or steal any treasure they find underground. Imagine if we didn't suspect anything. By the time Jur E recommends the Black Cliff Forge for the excavation project, at most we would maybe do a fre- No red flags if all they did was change some key staff. And even if we decided to vet the staff individually, that's the advantage of planning this far in advance. <laughs> it was a clever move. When you put it like that, it all makes sense. If we hadn't found this out, someone else would have stolen the treasure. So... Who's really behind all this? That's a question for the newcomers. But let's start with that worker over there for now. Uh, excuse us. We want to ask you about the newcomers. <sighs> You want them to teach you or something? I gotta say, these newcomers are in tip-top shape. Fast learners, too. My only complaint is that they're always going out drinking at night. But they never let us join them. I guess they just need some time to adjust. I'm sure we'll get to know each other over time. Huh. They go out drinking. This area isn't exactly... You got that right. They tell me they go all the way back to Liwe Harbor to drink at Wanmin Restaurant. It rained after work today, so they actually stuck around at the site for a while. But as soon as the rain stopped, they went out drinking again right away. Hey, you're only young once, right? I say, if they can hack it, let them at it. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go talk somewhere else. Looks like our hunch was on the Mora. These newcomers are very suspicious. Drinking in Liyue Harbor, huh? <laughs> Some cover story. I'll wager they've been going to intelligence updates. Good thing it rained today. It means they'll leave footprints. I doubt they'd give themselves away that easily, but let's follow them and try our luck. They went that away! Hurry! We gotta catch up! Just as I thought. They didn't go to Liyue Harbor. They went that way. Well, 
The footprints stop here. But, judging from the direction, I'm guessing their destination was that abandoned house. Looks like we were too late. This has got to be where the newcomers rendezvous with whoever they're working for. But all the evidence has been destroyed. Look at these ashes. Someone was burning documents not long before we arrived. Could there be anything left? Maybe the wind could have blown the fire out before everything was finished burning. The odds of that are very slim. It's practically impossible. I've checked. All the paper's been burned. There's only ash left now. Why don't we wait for them back at the Black Cliff Forge? They've got to go back there sooner or later. We can't count on that. Clearly they were based here at one point, but it's mysteriously abandoned now. To me, that says that whoever's behind this has moved them somewhere else, to throw our investigation off course. Darn! Guess this is where our trail runs cold. Make no mistake. The purpose of our trip wasn't to find any solid evidence. We just need to figure out who's behind Jur E. I smelled something peculiar the moment I came in. Those newcomers probably thought they'd be safe as long as they burned the letters. But what they failed to consider is that paper and ink from different regions produce different odors when they're burned. Really? Pilot can't smell anything. Do you smell anything? There is a certain place with a freezing cold climate where there's nothing but ice as far as the eye can see.
Some wealthy people there put floral fragrance in their ink as a way of injecting a little romance into their writing. When that fragrant ink is burned, this is the exact odor that it leaves behind. Exactly. The evidence will soon be blown away by the wind, so it's nothing we can arrest anyone with. But it's all I need. Now I know who we're dealing with. I can plan our next move. Lady Yelan! Oh, thank goodness I finally found you. I thought I'd never see you again. Um, who are you? Don't be alarmed. This is Upei. He's Wen Yuan and Shang Hua's colleague. I sent him to look into Zhu Yi's regular contacts. Since Zhu Yi likes fishing, Upei thought he might know some of the fishermen and sailors. So he... I left him a note at Yen Shang Tea House telling him to look for me at Black Cliff Forge when he got back. If there'd been an ambush waiting for us there, it means we'd have had some backup. So, what did you find out at sea? Uh, forgive my incompetence. I'm afraid I've come up empty-handed. I asked all the fishermen multiple times, but none of them had any interactions with Jury before. Then the waves got so choppy I ended up falling overboard. Fortunately, someone managed to drag me out. When I got back, I heard that you'd gone to Black Cliff Forge and might need backup, so I went straight there as fast as I could. Didn't even stop to change my clothes. Hmm. Huh. Well, Uncle Tien said that Jur E once bought a recipe from one of the fishermen. Did you hear anything about that at all? What? That's news to me. No, that's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. Lady Yelan, I'm telling you, I spoke to every single fisherman out there, and none of them mentioned anything about a recipe. Interesting. Then I wonder how that even more wonderful fish soup came about. Fish soup? What fish soup? Nothing. Our priority right now is to find a way to get our hands on some- Well, any suggestions? Hmm, not a bad idea. Upe, what do you think? Honestly, I've already tried following Jury, but the guy's too cautious. Never meets with anyone suspicious. Okay, so tailing's out! No, we'll still need to tail him. But first, we need to do some groundwork. Groundwork? When you've worked in intelligence for a long time, you'll understand that no one can stay on high alert forever. Tomorrow morning, I'll announce his victory at your high pavilion. Take a guess what you think he'll do next. Be sure to arrive on time. You won't want to miss the show. This!
According to today's Forest Patrol route map, uh, we need to head here first, then make our way over to there? Hmm. There's a lot of writing. 